your overall hiring for the full year will be more than earlier estimated. I think you're looking at maybe 78,000 in FY22 versus an earlier estimation of about between 40 to 45,000, if I understand correctly. Talk me through what this talent problem is. Um, is it a problem? Is there an opportunity to it in any fashion? How it plays into your costs and margins? Um, and when do you think it might resolve itself, let's say, over the next few quarters? So, uh, Enka, when we started speaking about this, uh, the demand environment about a year back, right? And we were uh, you know, outer industry uh, narrative in that, and we called out the, the strong demand environment that we're seeing in the future. Uh, we backed it up by increasing our uh, campus hiring. And uh, we also, so what we've done is, while we said 45,000, we onboarded those 45,000 people in the first half, which gives us the space to onboard more to the second half of the year. So we have taken a, a very structured approach to that capacity addition in line with our own uh, expectation of demand. We also significantly increased our internal training and uh, we were the ones who went out and said in the pandemic that we are not going to retrench anybody because we believe that you know this is a passing phase and these are the people that need to be trained and retained as we go forward so very strong doubling down on our internal talent uh, retention of the talent investment into it and then very strong uh, hiring on the campus side uh, these were all in anticipation of the demand uh, parts of the industry need not did not uh, participate in that and therefore there is this significant crunch that you're currently seeing that everybody is trying to uh, you know scramble to meet the demand that is there so coming to your point as to how long this will last probably it will last a few more quarters till the uh, individual supply chains at each of these levels stabilize with the more longer term uh, hiring till then this uh, extreme uh, lateral movement will continue but i would think that uh, by the time we get into the middle of next year, uh, you know, Q1, Q2, um, bulk of this would be behind us and we would be in a more stable but elevated uh, attrition. See, uh, we are currently at about 11 and a half on an LTM basis. Um, we have been at 12, 13 and we have had a peak of 16 in the past. So in a high demand environment, uh, 12, 13 is, a, uh, is something that we have seen in the past also. That's not a... a but the significant increase quarter on quarter, that will start uh, tapering off in a couple of quarters. Okay, so you're preparing us for maybe, maybe, and I understand it's a volatile situation, uh, maybe a worse attrition number, but you're hopeful that it will ease in Q1, Q2. Really, what, how does this hurt your ability to maybe achieve the growth that you want uh, to? Again, as I said, um, having spotted the demand opportunity early and invested into that capacity side, uh, currently, it is not yet impacting our uh, growth momentum, the capacity crunch, but our uh, bench is getting uh, squeezed. I'm looking at revenue per employee. Uh, we spoke a little bit about the consulting model that some of your your largest peer has, um, and I'm, you know Accenture has 624,000 employees, total revenue of 50 billion in FY21. You're at 528,000 employees. Uh, with an estimated total revenue of around 25, 26 billion uh, this year. Um, does that metric change any time in the near term over the next three to five years? The number of people to the size of the revenue? That's not a metric that we uh, target per se. As I said, in most uh, areas, you will think of value addition per employee. right? And the economic value addition per employee that we have is actually much higher than, or almost, I would say, 70, 80% higher than the next largest competitor. And that's a more important metric because the key resource for us is the employee. And for each employee, are we able to create that economic value is the key question for us. And we have built our model to maximize that. And Doesn't that puts... have a direct linkage to costs necessarily more than or cost or wages or salaries or remuneration per employee? I'm just trying to understand this. It's a free market, and everybody is in the same uh, same space uh, in the same uh, operating model. So it's a question of there will be areas which will generate high revenue with uh, zero value addition. Um, uh, you know, there, there could be very very different businesses. Our focus is to be in the business spaces where the value addition is most, and that's the metric that we are tracking. And within that. Uh, 
uh, uh, spectrum, we believe that the adjacencies that we're seeking on the growth and transformation will actually continue to help us deliver on that. And uh, that's the investment that we are making. So the metric that we're chasing is a different one.